Welcome to St. Mark United Methodist Church in Hamilton, New Jersey. I'm Pastor Bob Marks, and it is my joy to greet you, those of you in the sanctuary, as well as those of you on Facebook and also on YouTube. We wish you all happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day baby clothes drive uh, will continue to be uh, go on until after this service. This drive supports the Maker's Place in Trenton. On Monday, May the 7th, there will be a fundraiser at Texas Roadhouse uh, here on Route 33. From 4 to 10 p.m., if you take one of the flyers that's in the narthex, if you purchase your meal, either take out or eat in, then 10% of the cost of your meal will come back to support the scholarship fund here at St. Mark. A reminder for those scholarship applications for youth graduating high school this year and entering college in the fall, uh, those applications are available now in the Norfolk. Having made these announcements, we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We invite you to join us in the call to worship, which you will see on the screen. And Jesus said, Come. To all mothers and children, he said, Come. To the motherless and the childless, he said, Come. To all who long to be mothered, he said, Come. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
And our hymn is Happy the Home When God is There. join together in a unison prayer for Mother's Day. Loving God, we know your love because we have mothers. We thank you for those who have carried us in their wombs. We thank you for the mothers who did not give birth to us, yet loved us just the same. With gratitude, we remember their words of encouragement when we have felt unsure or afraid. We thank you for their kindness when the world has treated us unkindly. We thank you that they protected us with the fierceness of a lioness protecting her cubs. We thank you for the times when they corrected us rather than letting us continue down wrong paths. Help us to live that their investment in us might not be in vain. We honor our mothers with lives of service to you. In the name of the risen Christ, amen. And now we enter into a time of silence. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and hear our voices now as we join in that prayer which you taught disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
calling for you and for me. At the heart's portal, he's waiting and watching, watching for you. Our scripture lesson this day comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. I'll be reading from the 20th chapter, the 20th through the 28th verses. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are ye able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard it, they were angry with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants above them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life 
a ransom for many. And our hymn is A Mother Lined a Basket. Mother's Day is traditionally the day when children give something back to their mothers. For all of the spit that they had to produce to scrub their face, to the used gum they held in their hands, all the noses they wiped, and all the bloody knees they made well with their kisses. This is the day mothers are rewarded for washing sheets in the middle of the night, driving kids to school when they miss the school bus, and enduring all those t-ball and soccer games in the rain or the sweltering sun. It's a day of appreciation for making your children finish something they said they just couldn't do, not believing them when they said they hate you, and sharing their good times as well as bad. What are mothers? Well, 
Mothers are teachers, mothers are disciplinarians. They're cleaning ladies, and some mothers are gardeners and mowers of the lawn. Mothers are nurses and doctors, psychologists and counselors, chauffeurs and coaches. Mothers are developers of personalities and shapers of attitude. Mothers are soft voices saying, I love you. And mothers are a link to God, a child's first impression of God's love. Mothers are all these things and much more. Now, by this time, you're thinking either that you are or you're not a mother like that or that your mom was or wasn't a mom like that. The truth is, is that while each of us have either been a mother or had a mother, each lives out that role of mother differently and uniquely. Children do not come with instruction manuals, and while every mother is different, so is every child. Mothers try their best with what they know. So in addition to all that Mother's Day is, in addition to having this be a day in which you tell your mother thank you or you love her, it also may be a day for you to say, I'm sorry or I forgive you. For many of us, today, is a day to remember. One of Sigmund Freud's most famous quotes concerns his apparent inability to understand women. He wrote, The greatest question that has never been answered, and which I have not yet been able to answer despite my 30 years of research into the feminine soul, is what does a woman want? First of all, it, it's the wrong question. It assumes that every woman or every man wants the same thing. You can't generalize about all women in the same way you can't generalize about any group. If you ask ten women what they want, you're likely to get ten different answers. Second, asking a, a woman what does a woman want is too vague of a question. Instead, maybe the question is, what do you want in a marriage? What do you want in a career? What do you want in friendship? What are you looking for in a church? If I asked Cindy what she wanted from me, I'm sure she could answer fairly quickly. She'd tell me that she want, wants me to listen to spend more time with the family. She would once tell me that she'd want me to pay more attention to her, to just love her. You see, if you ask the right question, you're more likely to get the right answer. Today we examine a mother who has a specific question or request. She might be considered to be a helicopter parent, paying extremely close attention to each of her child's experiences and problems. Helicopter parents are so named in that like helicopters, they hover over, overseeing every aspect of their child's life. The woman is Zebedee's wife and the mother of the sons of thunder, James and John. A close examination of scripture and the aid of tradition has led scholars to believe 
that the mother of James and John is Salome. Salome, who we're told is present at the crucifixion. Some would argue that Salome is Mary's sister, making her Jesus' aunt, and making James and John Jesus' cousins. Now, we find this account in Matthew 28, which we read today here as part of the scripture lesson. James and John come to Jesus with mom. It's also found this story in Mark chapter 10, where James and John make their request of Jesus, but they make their request on their own in the Gospel of Mark, moms otherwise occupied. We concentrate this day on Matthew's account, in that today is Mother's Day and we're looking more closely at Mrs. Zebedee. James and John's mom comes to Jesus with a specific request. She asks Jesus for a favor. She needs Jesus to do her a solid. She asks Jesus to assure her that her boys would have seats of honor, one on the right hand, one on the left hand in the kingdom of heaven. They would not only have seats of honor, They would be Jesus' chief assistants. Jesus' right hand and left hand man. Now even 2,000 years later, this request of Zebedee's wife seems a little out of place. A little nervy to say the least. While we really can't blame a mother who seeks assurance that her boys will be taken care of, her request seems to assume that James and John were more important than the other disciples. If indeed these are Jesus' cousins, Salome here is reminding Jesus that blood is thicker than water. I mean, if there was a contest here for MVD, most valuable disciple, each of the disciples could come with a note from mom expressing why they're the most important one. Zebedee's wife's request could create division and bad feeling. And later in this passage, we're told that the other ten disciples were angry at the request of James, John, and their mom. Disciples then and now want to know what their standing is in relationship with one another. Jesus' response here is not anger as much as pointing out that they don't know what they're asking for. They, They were asking the wrong question. Could they drink the cup of suffering that he was ready to drink? And the disciples assure him they're ready. Even so. It was not Jesus' position to grant place in the kingdom. After bringing all the disciples together, he describes for them a different way to live, in which, in which the greatest must be servant of all. In the same way, he came to serve, not to be served. Looking ahead, Mrs. Zebedee didn't know that day that her son James would be the first of the disciples to be martyred for the faith. In Acts chapter 12, we read of James, the brother of John, who was beheaded by King Agrippa. 
If I were to ask what a great mother is, you would likely define such a person as one that would help their children achieve greatness. That there would be a desire to keep one's child safe and help them make a name for themselves. Though these are natural instincts for a mother, when it comes to the kingdom of God, we have to reorient our thinking. We come to define, redefine success and to see greatness as service. We live in an ambitious world. We want to know who's the smartest and the fastest, the richest and the strongest and even the most faithful. And who is the most important disciple? But let's face it. In this culture, life is about winning and losing. It's why we keep score. If we didn't care who won or who lost, there'd be no reason to keep score. That's why this mother came to Jesus. But Jesus turns things around. Whoever seeks to be first must be servant of all. While it seems that James and John and Mom get it wrong, we can't blame Mrs. Zebedee. She wants her sons to be near Jesus. Now, that's a worthy aspiration. That's a prayer that Christian mothers have prayed forever, that their children would end up close to the Lord. Anywhere Jesus goes, she wants her boys hitched to his wagon. Mothers ever since have prayed that their children would be close to Jesus. Secondly, it's clear here that she believes in the reality of the kingdom of God of which Jesus spoke so often. While she might not be able to theologically explain it, she believes that there is a kingdom of God that Jesus could usher her boys into. She not only believes in this kingdom of God that is beyond this life and the ways of this world, she wants her children to have places of authority, places of responsibility in such a kingdom. She doesn't want them to be onlookers or to be satisfied sitting on the bleachers or resting on the bench. She wants her boys to be actively involved in the work of the kingdom. Mrs. Zebedee wants her boys to live a life worth living, to be committed to a cause, to offer themselves to something more than a nine to five. At the end of their lives, she wants her boys to look back and know that they did something of substance. That they helped somebody. That they truly lived. It could be argued that James and John's mom was guilty of seeking to live vicariously through the experiences of her boys. Maybe so. But it's clear here that she has a faith, a commitment to serve Jesus on her own. Christian mothers want to share their faith with their children until those children develop a faith stance and a faith story of their own. 
for the one who is greatest must be servant of all. We close with this prayer for mothers. Uh, After each petition, I'm going to ask you to say the following phrase. We pray to the Lord. Let's practice it. At At the end of each petition, I'll pause and you'll call back. We pray to the Lord. For our mothers who have given us life and love that we might show them reverence and love. For mothers who've lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. For women, though without children of their own, who have mothers, who like mothers, have nurtured and cared for us. For mothers who've been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families. Loving God as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children. So you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. We pray to the Lord. is Are Ye Able?
This day, if you're lucky enough to be able to reach out and call your mother or text your mother or be with your mother, thanks be to God, what a blessing is yours this day. Those who are left with the memory of their mother, we invite you this day to offer your praise and thanks to God for that gift in your life. Go from this place giving God thanks for all the influences in our lives, and particularly the influence of mom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.